The next map in the Maguma series is Auric Basin. Auric Basin's meta was done quite a lot as a decent gold farm, so it's definitely worth learning how this one works. The meta is split into two different parts. The Defending Tarir, to restore power to outposts and pylons. And then the Battle in Tarir, to defeat the Octovines and Mordrum that are besieging the city. Most of the night is spent helping out the Exalted around the four outposts. There is one to the north, east, south and west. Northwatch will have you collect the sediment from the fallen Exalted for Arcanus Mariette and end with you defeating the Bramble's main stall. The ruins of Eastwatch, because yes, it is destroyed, requires you to defeat Vine Tenders and defend Sage Corin and ultimately have you defeat a Vine Tooth Prime. This is a rather short one. Then off to the south we have Mordrum Breachers that need to be destroyed, but then splits off into three sub-chains that run simultaneously, so split up. Southeast needs to escort Sage Vasani, the southern split needs to escort Exalted Sage Mansir, and the southwest group needs to keep Sage Gora safe. Then the final one at Westwatch will have you work with the Skrit to defeat the Vine Crawler and protect Skrit on a forage. After this forage, it splits up into two events. One will have you help Spelunk explore a cave. This event is needed for some collections, by the way, as you'll defeat Auron the Golden Ooze at the end. And the second event will have you defend Dukura as she gathers Saurian eggs. The battle in Tarir part starts with the Exalted Tests, the Trial by Fire. You will need the first tier of the Exalted Lore Mastery to enter these, but completing these challenges gives the player a golden armor to use in the actual battle, which is a huge help. Northwatch players need to kick mushrooms into their Tyrant King three times. Eastwatch is a free-for-all friendly brawl and the last person standing wins. South group will have a small jumping puzzle to complete. First player to reach the finish gets a golden armor. Now the players on the west challenge will have to bid on the golden armor with their Aurelium. Pretty straightforward. Simultaneously with these events there are also standard Defeat the Mustering Mordrum events at each of the Tarir entrances, so not everyone can go in the mini meta events for the armors. Right, now on to the actual battle phase of the meta. Defeating the Mordrum and breaking into Tarir, you'll have to teleport, glide or run down to the Octavines that are besieging the central chamber. The golden armors can be used to knock the instant downing trigger blossoms away from the rest of the players. Away, not into and to CC the huge Mordrum that are wreaking havoc. The Octavines need to be killed within two minutes of each other, but if you see one of the other lanes lagging behind, consider going there and helping out. Each of the lanes has their own mechanics though, so let's have a look at those. North group, you need to grab a Bramble Be Gone bundle at the start and use your herbicide spray to destroy the vine walls surrounding the Octavine. Once they're removed, build the herbicide turret and use fire to remove one slime layer per shot. The turrets are quite vulnerable though, so be careful for enemies. Golden armors should focus on keeping away the trigger blossoms and disabling the Mordrum arrowhead and crushers. Avoid disabling them on top of the players as they'll do an attack immediately after. This lane can be rather difficult, so focus on killing the Mordrum breachers first as they'll spawn enemies indefinitely. East lane is pretty straightforward. Grab a bomb and use the updraft to drop them towards the Octavine. Avoid the red poisonous gas that is dropped by the bristlebacks though. Also, aim the bombs at the top of the Octavine, not the base. Enchanted armors should focus on keeping away the trigger blossoms. This lane is relatively easy, so it requires the least amount of players. If you see a lot of players east already, spread out to the other lanes. The south gate is probably the most difficult one, as it requires people to use their displacement skills. An exalted bomb will spawn at the start, which slowly makes its way over to the Octavine. This can and should be sped up by using push or pull skills. If the bomb gets hit by too many attacks from hostile mobs, however, it will explode and reset. Should the bomb move through the brambles left behind a Mordrum Bonebreaker Alpha, it will become entangled and players will have to break its defiance bar. The exalted armors cannot move the bomb. Their focus should be on keeping hostile mobs away from the bomb. If the armors get aggro from the Mordrum floppers, they should tank it facing away from the bomb, as the floppers can pull the bomb in. 
This lane requires some significant coordination, but it needs said that the Octavine is vulnerable for twice as long as the other lanes. If you're a more confident player with some push or pull abilities, consider going to this lane. Lastly, there is the West lane. In this lane, players will be transformed into mushrooms by walking through the spore cloud. They then need to make their way over the hostile infested room to the Octavine and explode to remove a layer of slime. It is possible to run straight for the Octavine, but a safer route is in going around the room's edges. Armors should focus on keeping hostiles away from the transformed players, as a single hit will undo their transformation. With enough mushroom runners and proper mob management, this lane isn't too difficult to manage either. All four Octavines must be destroyed within two minutes of each other. If this fails, the ones that were brought down will regenerate a quarter of their health, which will make it harder again to coordinate. After the Octavines are destroyed, the path down opens up for all players and a massive amount of exalted chests will be available to loot. These do require an exalted key to open, so make sure you've done plenty of events before the meta, or alternatively you can buy them from the exalted mastery vendors. I hope this guide for Arik Bazan was helpful. If it was, make sure to boop that like button and subscribe if you haven't yet. Until the next one though, take care my friends and bye bye.